Well, let's let's start here. Uh, let's uh, record it. Okay, so we're going to be talking about. Um, we're going to start off. Uh, this is the uh, part four introduction to uh, uh, hormone optimization, uh, and we're going to talk. Of, we're going to go back. We we finished. We did a little bit of the laboratory last last time. But we're going to go back and do 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 it uh, uh, from stem to stern. Um, so the first question is why you know why is there a controversy? Um, I think some of it again has to do with um, some some myths that have that have grown over over time. Uh, you know, when you measure uh, a, uh, a female's uh, hormones and they're premenopausal, you have to know uh, when or have to be able to tell what part of the cycle they're in, because if they're in the um, follicular phase and you get a, a progesterone level of zero point four, it's different than if they're in the luteal phase and they get a, a follicular a, a progesterone of zero point four. So you have to be able to tell where they are in the cycle. Now, we've sometimes done um, saliva tests, a, a 28 day um, saliva test. And when we when we go into a deeper dive into uh, the female hormone um, uh, uh, primer that, that we call it, uh, we'll, we'll look at the 20, a 28 day cycle. So to, to, so you can see how that works. Mm -hmm. okay. um, this is just sort of a general overview. And this is this is what I use as my screening test. And again, uh, it, some of it's a little bit of experience. You'll be able to you'll be able to tell um, where they are in their cycle. We we try to when we do, when we do labs for uh, premenopausal females, we we tell them we want to get it from days nineteen through twenty one of their yes. cycle because that's when you get the peak of the progesterone and the peak of the estro estrogen, or the second peak of the estrogen estradiol. Um, Postmenopausal, it doesn't really matter. If they've had a hysterectomy and still have uh, their ovaries, um, uh, uh, you really can't tell. Um, but if you look at the LH and FSH, so we'll get that, um, you'll be able to get an idea of where they would be in their cycle. Um, and, and guys, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So, you know, some of the controversies is, hey, I have a urine test. So, you know, use my stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. sure. There's that too. Um so um, there, there's there's pros and cons to each, um, but I'm pretty comfortable using the the, the serum ones. Um, so that's that's kind of what, where I where I stick. Okay. okay. And the other thing is, you know, the other tests are uh, the lab the the, the uh, blood tests. For the most part, you can get most of it covered. You know, as, as an insurance coverage. Um, and I'll tell you how to how to get a a, a pretty good uh, uh, round round let rounded. Uh, uh, profile for about 300 bucks cash, you know, for a cash price, which isn't too bad. Um, and um, the other tests are, you know, uh, more. <laughs> and uh, most of the time insurance won't pay for them. And so, you know, we try not to stick the patients with too many, too many burdens because they got to pay us too. Right. Gotcha. So um, like that. Okay. So, um, so again, uh, you know, what we're looking for is we we want our patients to live in the mid range to the upper upper third. Um, that's where that's where you're going to get the most bang for your buck, and that's what that's where they're going to feel feel well. Uh, so uh, you know the 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 normal ranges that you get that you know on a lab on a lab sheet um, are for the most part what are known as two standard deviations. You know, that's a mathematical model that came from architects and engineers in the 40s and 50s. Yeah. Um, most every lab had their own sort of standard uh, up until the, the late 60s, early 70s, when the big lab, you know, the national labs decided that that we're going to use um, the same standard. So I always use, when I when I explain to the patients, I always use vitamin D as an example. We, we draw a 25-hydroxy vitamin D, most every lab will tell you 30 to 100 is normal. Okay. Right. So, and then, so, and I use the, I, and then I use the example. That means that if we stop a thousand cars on, on a street corner where, you know, my, my office is, is right, right on a corner of, and it's a very busy corner. There's probably a thousand cars go by an hour easily, even in the middle of the day. Uh, so we take a thousand cars, we stop them all, get their vitamin D level. 95.4% of them will be between 30 and 100. That's your that's your not that's your two standard deviations. And then I I the next thing I say is well, if we were going to take a, a pass fail class up at the college, 95.4% of the pa class passes. That's considered 
um, you know, the, uh, the the sort of the, the the normal the normal range. But when you look at some of the numbers, uh, it's it, the there's there are issues. So 30 to 100 is normal. That means that 31 um, won't be flagged because that's normal. 98 won't be flagged. That's normal. So those are essentially equivalent, 31 and 98. And some patients say, well, you know, that's that's what it is. I says, okay, 29 is abnormal. 31 is normal. 98 is normal. And then the light bulb goes on. Okay. I said, okay, you see what you see the problem with this? Oh yeah. Okay. That's, that's, yeah, we got to do something that that's not going to work for us. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, what we did was we took, um, the, um, the, the, the outer extremes, the 30 and hundred uh, added together is 130 divided by two 65. That's your midpoint. And then what we did was we take one standard deviation. We'll take uh, the 65 and then we'll take one standard deviation, which is 68.124%. I usually just say 68%. Um, break that in half, 34% on either side of our 65. So you could take 0.34 times 65. And I don't have it in my head right now, but um, so 65 would be 25. Um, and then our that'll give us uh, at the bottom, take we subtract 25, that'll take get us to 50, or rather, just uh rather, sorry, it's not 25, it's 15. Um uh, we get us to 50 and add 20, add 15 to our 65 or midpoint is 80. So 50 to 80. So that's our optimal range there. And then mm -hmm. we, do okay. we do that with every, with every lab. Now, some of the labs are, are absolutes. So we have to skew it a little bit. And I'm going to show you um, one the sheet that we use. I'll, I'll send it to you. Um, it's in a, it's in a G drive. If you can, if you can, if you have that, you can just, you know, put it in your own and use it if you want. If not, um, you can convert it, um, uh, you know, you can convert it to an Excel uh, profile, okay? G Drive, uh, Google Drive? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I'll send that to you. I have it up here. I'll show it to you when we when we get okay. to, when we go through them all, okay? So basically, again, you 50% and above, that's where we want to be. Um, here's the the lab, uh, the labs that we draw. Um, and again, you can print this out and um, uh, uh uh, use this for yourself. If if uh, if it's a little confusing, uh, send me a message later, and I'll send you because um, I have a sheet for males and a sheet for females. Um, I'll send you those. Okay. Um, the sheets have um, diagnostic codes on them, the ICD-10 codes on them, and so we have two sheets for 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 each. We have a Z code sheet which we use for our, our first visit because um, I technically am not supposed to know what they are. Uh, you know, so those are screening codes. And then we have um, diagnostic codes also. And then you can mix and match them if, if need be also. Oh, Z codes, which are kind of it's, symptoms. Yeah, they're they're whatever. yeah, they're they're screening codes, you know. It'll, so it'll say it'll it'll have um this and they're 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 it's not the same numbers, and I don't really have them off the top of my head, but they'll have it'll be like screening for TSH, screening for thyroid, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh you do uh you do pretty routine cortisol levels, AM and PM? Um, not actually. That's one that I don't do a whole lot of. Remember, okay. we talked about reverse T three. I use that right. as, as I use that as my um, as my uh, as my screen for that. And so, if they're under stress and they're not yeah, sleeping that kind well, of, yeah. Not, um, you know, you usually, know, right? usually uh, we'll, we'll go to this when um, um, we we've we've you know we've already started on our adapt adaptogenic herbs. Um, and we're not getting anywhere. Okay. okay. And the four point saliva test, and I'll show you a picture of it um, somewhere along the line here. Um, you know what those are, you know, they, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so um, that actually helps me more with timing uh, the, the, um, the, 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 when, when we, when we, when we, when we do the treatments rather than, I mean, you know, it, that's, it is this sort of the definitive test, but again, it's really expensive. The reverse T3 is, um, 90 to 95 percent correlates with it so um that's uh, that's what i use gotcha okay okay oh um let's go back just one when we do these um uh, like zinc uh, uh uh they should have a magnesium in here somewhere too um you want to do red blood cells okay um zinc uh, red blood cell rbc zinc rbc um magnesium and rbc selenium we do we do a selenium okay okay um, 
So, so any of any of the minerals, you need red bloods. You have to know what's what the, what's in the blood cells. The serum, a lot of times, are not accurate at all. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, um, I, I know we did a couple of these last time, but let, we'll go through them real quick. So, no, number one, C-reactive protein. That's our inflammatory marker. I usually do the HS one, and that gives mm -hmm. us an idea about. Um, uh, cardiac cardiovascular um you know uh the blood vessel uh, intactness if they have um uh cough cold infection it, and, you know these these numbers are going to be high i had a kid who had a, a ulcerative colitis and his crp was 71 mm -hmm. um, that's not what we're looking for okay we're looking for chronic disease and what we're looking for is, is um, where they started and where they're going. If they go down, that then you know we're reducing inflammation. If they go up, that means that there's something else. Go there's something going on. And so if they they come in and the first time it's zero, so normal is zero to three. Our goal is less than 1.0. If they come in the first time and they're 1.2, and the second time they come in and they're 0 0.8, well then we're we're on the right track. If they come in and they're 0 0.8, and the next time they're 1.2. Um, then, um, you know, we got, we have some sort of inflammation going on and, you know, it's the subtle, um, you know, low level inflammation. That's the chronic disease issues. So you need to uh, compare them. So usually I, what I'll do is I'll look at two or three, you know, when somebody comes in, I'll, I'll look at the last one, I'll look at the one before and I'll print the whole sheet out and, and I'll have them right in front of me. Um, you know, and compare it to, to this one. So, um, so this is a, this will give you an idea of, you know, are we on the right track or, or is something else going on? Gotcha. And, and a lot of times the something else going on is, you know, um, they're, you know, they're still eating junk. They're still, you know, drinking, they're still going to the, well, out here, they're going to the casino. There's a casino in every corner here. So, exactly. um, so, so your go-to here, um, for uh, the inflammation is, um, oh, your omega-3 fatty acids. Um, usually I start with 2000 milligrams a day. I've gone up to four, and so I was in a lecture at AMMG a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, somebody talking about brain inflammation. He calls them units, three three thousand uh, milligrams or three grams per unit. And he starts with three units or nine thousand milligrams a day for a week. Fatty acid. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, for just for a week, and then he goes down to two units, which is six thousand, and then he he he. he after uh, two weeks, I think it was, and then the, the, the fourth week, he, he, he has them at 3,000 units. So a little bit more than I've done. Um, but two to 4,000 uh, 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 milligrams uh, usually should do the, do the job. Curcumin is, um, I'm not so sure about hitting it with 9,000, you know, from going from, you know, cold turkey to 9,000 all at once. I know it seems a little bit extreme to me, but uh, I don't know. Um, and then curcumin or turmeric, 500 milligrams once or twice um, in the AM, once or twice in the PM. I usually start with one. Uh, that That's pretty standard. Make sure it has bioprene in it. It has to have black pepper. That's black pepper. Um, otherwise, it doesn't get absorbed. Um, Say it again. It has to have bioprene. B-I-O-P-R-I-N-E. Bioprene is uh, black pepper. So all your better uh, supplement companies will, will, that's the way it'll come. You don't really have to think about it. So uh, Douglas Pure, Zymogen, uh, Orthomolecular, they all, they all have it in there. So, all right. But if they go to, you know, Costco and get a, I, you know, they get, well, I have turmeric from Costco. Um, you have to tell them to look yeah. at the bottle to see if it has it in there. And Costco's hit or miss. Sometimes the patients do well with the Costco stuff and sometimes they don't. So, um, so that's kind of hit or miss at times. And blood sugar. So I, you know, the, the way I sort of, I frame it, um, uh, uh, I frame it, we look at it, um, you know, like like the um, uh, Christmas carol, remember the ghost of Christmas, past, present, and future. We do the the, the blood sugar of past, present, and future. Um, and uh, we tell them, you know, us genius doctors told everybody not to eat fat in the 80s and 90s, so everybody got fat. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> you know, you take a look at the picture of how, uh, uh, you know, the, the the obesity crisis happened. It, it started about a, six months to a year after we told everybody, you know, you, you should be on a 10% on a fat diet or a 20% fat diet, <laughs> right? And then all of a sudden, everybody got fat. So, so the past, that's your hemoglobin A1C, that's your average over three months. 
Um, normal is less than 5.7. Remember, 5.7 to 6.4 is considered pre-diabetes. Over 6.5 is diabetes. Our optimal is 5.3. So we'll we'll want to do some some interventions there if it's more than that. Gotcha. The present that's the fasting when when they when they took the blood. 65 to 99 is normal. Um, our goal is 65 to 84, and I'll get you that reference if you, if need be. It, it, I have it in one of the you have it in one of the lectures. Don't, don't that's only, okay. That's okay. all right. Yeah. Um, so every point over 84, there's about a four percent chance of developing a, 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 a glucose dysfunction. It could be hypoglycemia. Usually, it's you know hyperglycemia, diabetes. So as the example here, you got a fasting blood sugar of 94. 94 minus 84 is 10 times four. So that's a 40 percent chance of developing blood uh, blood blood sugar abnormality. It's usually within the next five to 10 years. It's kind of a predictive value. So you can follow. Uh, that okay. Along. So okay, and that sometimes you know we'll 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 sort of say, oh, okay. So, so, you know, if they have a blood sugar of 85, 85 minus 84 is one times four is 4%, 899, which is normal, right? 65 to 99 right. is normal is uh -huh. 60, is 60%. So, gotcha. um, okay. With a, with a norm, normal blood sugar, normal. Okay. We do insulin. So insulin normal is 2.6 to about 25. Our goal is less than five. And then I'll, I'll calculate an insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is fasting blood sugar times fasting insulin. I should spell that right. Divided by right. 405. That'll get you the, the proper units. Okay. Normal is less than 2.9. Optimal is less than 1.9. So you'll be, you'd be surprised when you do this, if you got a, a, a fasting blood sugar of, you can get a fasting blood sugar, say of 90, and an insulin of 15, you're going to have um, uh, an abnormal insulin resistance. And uh -huh. it's, it's another clue to, um, you know, glucose sort of abnormality and, and with normal parameters. All right. So gotcha. part of our goal is to try to steer these folks into uh, a better, a better, a better lifestyle. Okay. Next, I use, look at homocysteine. Homocysteine uh, uh, deals with a, uh, 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 folic acid or B complex deficiencies. It, it's going to be high with the MTHFR um, uh, genetic defect. It was it's also a reflection again of damaged damaged arteries like C-reactive protein. And when we, a little bit later, we're going to talk about MCV. Increases risk of blood clots, strokes, heart attacks, and diminished limb circulation. So peripheral vascular disease. Normal is less than eleven. Our goal is less than ten. Our go-to is methylated B vitamins. So they'll say, well, I'll go to Costco and get a B, B complex and there's, you know, a thousand pills in there. That's not good enough. You need about 10 of those three times a day to be equivalent to a methylated one. So the one we like is from Apex Energetics. It's called Methyl SP. They got another one called Super Methyl SP. Um, but other, there's some other companies that, that um, will um, have pretty good uh, products too. The chiropractors like standard process for some reason. Um, Thorne has one, uh, I think it's called homo homocysteine assist. Um, uh, but anyway, I, I think it's because, I think it's because standard process uh, just invested so much in relationships with chiropractors. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but any, any one of those, again, as long as it's a, um, a you know, as long as it's a, a, a you know, a, a pharmaceutical grade, um, that, I mean, gotcha. that's, what we, that's what we need to advocate. You know, um, I would tell them, well, don't go, you know, so in Nevada, I can't tell them you have to buy our stuff. That's, that's against the law. So I said, well, you can get it anywhere you want. Right. That if you get, we, we always tell them if they get it, if they, if they find the same, same brand elsewhere, cheaper, we'll, we'll match it. I've had to do that twice in 20 years. So, <laughs> um, so we're pretty good about pricing things. Um, but, you know, the, it, well, especially well, next is vitamin D. I mean, this is pretty common. They'll, you know, they'll get vitamin D from God knows where, uh, you know, Walmart or, you know, the dollar store. Well, I'm taking 10,000 units of vitamin D and their vitamin D levels 28. <laughs> you know? Interesting. So, so obviously, it's there's not vitamin D in it. Huh. And so, uh, vitamin so this, uh, this Apex uh, product, it has a combination of uh, B6, B12 and Folic acid. Polar. Yeah, it has TMG in it also, betaine, and uh, I think it's got some vitamin C in it also. I see. Okay. So, 
Yeah. So, so the, the main core ingredients are these, are the, are the methylated B6, B12 and folic acid. I don't really care about, you know, all the other, yeah, you know, every company has, has, makes it a little differently. So it's their product. So, but this is the main core. So as yeah. long as you get that and the rest of it's just, you know, just for show. Gotcha. All right. So vitamin D, uh, you know, is, uh, <laughs> uh, you can write books about vitamin D, and then mm -hmm. if you go to to the quote unquote real doctors, uh, there, there's uh, I, twice now the day before I went to the last two AMMGs, I got the same video from some guy. I think his name is uh, Rothberg or Rosenberg. He's he's the head of endocrinology at UCSF, and he's got a video out on ViewMedi. Do you ever see ViewMedi? No. View V U M E D I. It's so the, it's the YouTube for 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 medical people. <laughs> Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's like 10 or 15 minute videos on there. And um, uh, he, he puts out about vitamin D. He says anything over 20 is a waste of time. And, uh, you know, totally. all, all, of, all, of, all of this nonsense about vitamin D is just a bunch of hooey. And it doesn't do anything except, uh, you know, uh, if, a ki if a kid's got rickets, give him vitamin D. Otherwise, it, it, you're, you're just wasting money. Man. No. Okay. So, okay. In the meantime, I mean, there's tons of literature. Uh, you know, yes. about, about, you know, you just, you name it. Um, I went to, uh, uh, there was a last summer, there was, uh, there was an integrative, uh, dermatology conference in Reno here. So I, I snuck in, I didn't pay, <laughs> pay for it. <laughs> ah. The guy, the guy was talking about uh, melanoma and apparently, uh, melanoma, uh, you're, you know, patients that have low vitamin D's are prone to melanoma and um, if they have a melanoma and you bring their vitamin D levels up, up to, uh, you know, a, a, our optimal range, um, he, um, they, they apparently do much better. Um, you know, the, oh, the mortality rate goes down from whatever it is to, to almost zero. Um, so and, was he on board with, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, our, yeah, our yeah, 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 well, well, optimal, uh, yes and no, he says, it's a, somebody asked him how much melon, how much vitamin D. And he says, well, I don't know. I tell him to take a thousand units, 2000 units. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> right. <laughs> and okay. I was sitting there. I don't know if you have you come around across Joel yet. My, my sidekick, the, the guy in my office, the, 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 the veteran, the guy with the real long I, beard. You haven't met him yet. He was with me. I, okay. Yeah. I said, I said, and the AOA kicked us out. They told us we weren't scientific because I'm going to tell you exactly how to, how to, how, what to look for and exactly how to dose it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. All right. So again, 30 to 100 is normal. I told you how we got to 50 to 80. This is our goal. For every thousand units of a good quality vitamin D, um, it will raise the the let your lab value by eight points. <clears throat> okay. So let's say your your lab value is about 35, which is what you'll get in Reno this time of year if somebody's not taking, you know, not taking vitamin D. 25 to 35 is pretty typical. Um just as a contrast, in Wilkes-Barre, where I came from, uh, by the end of the winter, by in March, um, you, yes. you, you'll, get, you'll get blood levels of six, four, nine. If you get an 11, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's coal country. You know how coal is made, right? Did you say Roxbury? Wilkes-Barre. Wilkes-Barre, okay. Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. <clears throat> the, the finest town in all of, of creation. <laughs> 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 okay, so for every thousand units, this this will go up by about eight points. So if we um, would give you a, a two thousand unit um, a, a, a tablet, um, yeah. at, so let's say you're at thirty five. So two times eight is sixteen, and thirty five is fifty one. So that'll get us to the bottom of our optimal. Remember, our, our mid range is sixty five. If we gave you four thousand, four times eight is thirty two. And 35 is 67, and that's mid-range. So there you go. We always dose vitamin D at bedtime. The reason being, one, it's a bit of a sleeping aid. It's not a sleeping pill, but it's a bit of a sleeping aid. Number two, uh, more importantly, it's what's known as a pro-hormone. You've probably heard that term. It aids other hormones in, in their function, particularly growth hormone and cortisol which are both um, uh, regenerated uh, during the sleep hours. Okay. okay. So you want the most bang for your buck. Okay. So almost nobody in your practice gets 10,000 units of vitamin D. Us day. Usually not. Now we do use a lot of, um, uh, there's a, there's a time release. There's a 25,000 
um, yeah, right. time release and a 50,000. And we do use that a lot. Um, it's not an exact um, one for one uh, transfer. So that would be 7,000 units a, a, a day. You know, if you break it down, you know, for okay. once a week, but it doesn't translate exactly like that. Um, but it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. um, and we do use the 50,000 every once in a while. I'll have to substitute with one or two of the daily ones a week. So, so get the 50,000 and then maybe one or two, five thousands, one, you know, once or twice a week. Um, that's not unusual. The, I, we like the 50,000 one. If they'll remember to take it, um, they're really inexpensive. Um, you right. can get, you can get, uh, so we get 30 of them from we get ours from zymogen i think it's about 12 12 dollars retail for 30 of them um we get them from from like uh costco or one of the supermarket pharmacies here uh well, i usually i usually prescribe them in in, in 12s so that's you know three months worth um and it's uh costco it's about eight dollars for 12 of them so you know it's about 60 cents a pill or 70 cents a pill per week so um so you know the the, the other stuff is sometimes really expensive so this one we can get away with pretty cheaply okay 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 um estrogens so we need estrone and estradiol and um so estrone that's your 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 e-s-t-r-o-n-e one right. estradiol one. and then you know there's estriol which is the pelvic estrogen um i don't usually measure estriol um that's the weaker of of, of the three um, and, and, um, that, that's usually for, um, uh, uh, being, you know, getting the, the, the pelvis ready to be, be able to be, uh, become fertilized later in it, post menopausal, it, 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 it aids with, um, lubrication, um, estrone is that's the bad guy, you know, that's takes you down that, um, uh, the, uh, uh, uh four and 16 hydroxy, uh, uh, estrone pathways so oh. guys, um, right. And it's the predominant estrogen after hysterectomy. Um, it's the predominant estrogen that you'll get with Premarin, you know, the synthetic estrogens. Ah. And it's the predominant estrogen that, that will be um, uh, metabolized with oral um, estradiol. And uh, I think we talked about using oral estrogens. We, we try to, we sort of frown on that. Um, you want, we, again, when we look at est the, the estrogens and progesterones, I don't really look at the, um, the you know the absolute number um uh we'll give you a couple of uh, uh clues though about what to do about them but for the estrone you want that to be less than 100 um if if it's greater than 100 um you're, they're almost invariably going down you know you, metabolizing into the um uh the, the damaging uh, uh 4 and 16 hydroxy estrone pathways um Okay, so. so then I guess if they are high in that, it's uh, uh, stress and uh, nutritional deficiencies yeah. and, and things that are causing yeah, it, you'll right? Yeah, you'll find that a lot of them were on a, a lot of um, birth control pills for a long period of time. Um, and remember, I, I guess they still do it, you know. So 12-year-old girl, you know, starts get her period. It, it starts, it stops, it starts. So they, oh, let's put you on birth control to, to, you know. So 13 years old, they're on birth control. They're getting synthetic hormones at, at age 13. So by the time that they're age 45, you know, <laughs> you know they're sunk. <laughs> All right. So the remedy here. Um, and this works like a charm, seven keto DHEA, 25 milligrams at bedtime. So if they're, if they get to nine, if they show up at that 90, I, I'll, I'll give them this, um, seven keto DHEA, 25 milligrams. You can go up to a hundred. Usually you don't need to go more than 50 and on average, it will decrease the estrone by 50%, up to 50% within about six to eight weeks. It works really quickly. Um, if, if, if you have nothing to do one day, go on youtube about 10 or probably about 15 years ago for dr oz on on weight loss for from dr oz if you could stand it and one of his main um uh ingredient you know one when, when, you know he's always uncovering you know the, the, the latest and the greatest was he was always uh hawking seven keto dhea for weight loss so put two and two together right why do you think that would be What is estrone? Uh, high estrone. If you're if you're estrogen dominant, then you're going to gain weight, right? Especially where in the uh, abdomen. Yeah, exactly. 
Okay, so seven keto DHEA. Now I don't know if he was talking about estrone, but um, you know, but that's that's actually the real reason. Uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, so how much do you give? Say that again. I usually start at twenty five, and we'll go up to a hundred. Um, rarely we need to go more than fifty. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we okay. check that every every thir three or four months, and it works really well. And if it doesn't work, they haven't been taking it. Okay, that's the only only okay. time I've ever. Seen. Are you using this? Well, you, you know, sometimes, and I, and I and again, that's a Judge Judy deal. It's a yes or a no. They're either doing it, or they're, you're either doing it or you're not doing it. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, by the way, you need to add that uh, seven keto DHEA to your slide. Okay. All right. I will um, make a make a note of that one too, with, along with the insulin. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna send me later. You'll you'll text me all the all the errors. Okay. <laughs> okay, estradiol. You know that's your main female. Um, you know hormone characteristic. So, uh, the skin, hair, nails, you know, breast uh, uh, development, voice. Um, you know, it, it's it's uh, politically incorrect coming. It's what makes a girl a girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> um, yes. And um, we're gonna show you the formula in a minute on what to do after we talk about progesterone. Uh, and then, and again, now, you know, there's another controversy here. So um, early on, when we first started, you know, doing uh, hormones for guys, uh, we would get their testosterones to 1500 and then we give them estrogen blockers to get the estrogen to zero, um, which was not a good thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So usually on the total, you have to look at the free also, but total testosterone for guys, 700 to 900 is usually a, a ideal. Anything over 900, you're probably just going to be getting more side effects um, uh, without any real benefit. Every once in a while, you'll, you'll find a, a gym rat who wants his testosterone at 2,500. And, you know, that's where you're going to see the road rage. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then so, and again, so th there's, uh, he was at the, uh, Dr. Camarella, he's the guy who, who takes seven milligrams of estradiol a day himself. <laughs> um, and uh, so uh, I'm still sticking right now with the optimal between 15 and 25. I mean, I've seen too many guys with when they have high testosterone, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70. Um, when you bring it down a little bit, they feel a lot better. Um, they, they tell you, that, you know, that, uh, one of the objections was you can get osteoporosis if you have have um, low estrogens. But um, when we when we get to it, um, I'll show you the studies that they I, I went and looked at the studies that they 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 uh, claim they, that they used for uh, not blocking estrogen and all and estradiols at all. And what it is, is when the estradiols are less than 15, you're going to get a higher incidence of osteoporosis. Anything over 15, uh, like eight, I think it's a, it was actually 18. So it was 18 to 34 is about 3.5 per uh, uh, 10,000 patients. And uh, uh, anything over 34, it's like three point. It was actually a little bit less. It was like 3.2. So it was pretty much the same. Um so, uh, so the thing is, so the bottom line is, uh, you don't want the estrogens at zero. Um, when it's too high, um, they're going they're going to get in a breast tenderness. Sometimes um, there is some uh, uh, there's some controversy whether the, there's uh, cardiac, you know, like with women, you know, the cardiac uh, preservation versus cardiac um, issues with guys. Um, and and they'll tell you, well, you, you know, the, 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 when the guy's uh, estrogen levels are really high, they have better um, um, uh, sexual function. And I've seen the exact opposite. When we bring it down into the into the uh, 20s, 30s, 40s, um, they feel much better and, and they perform much better. So, OK, so yeah. I'm sticking with with uh, th th what you see here for now. OK, um, still still kind of up in the air. Some guys are just adamant about it. You know, there's some crazy guys on YouTube that are um, one guy. He's not a he's not a doctor. He doesn't have any medical degree. He's been doing hormones and peptides for 30 years. And he's he's made it. He's his own expert. And, you know, <laughs> so um, the guy actually knows quite a bit. But every once in a while, he sort of goes off the re reservation here. So. Um, you'll find, you'll find that you can go on YouTube and you go to conferences. They'll tell you don't block estrogen at all. And they never use estrogen blockers, but, um, I'm still in the, in the sort of moderate camp. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. So progesterone, you know, is the uh, dominant um, second half of the cycle. Um, low progesterone um, is, is really, you know, one, it's the first symptom of uh, perimenopause. So patients will come to you and they're, um, they, and the symptoms are agitation, irritability, can't sleep, poor libido, headaches, short tempered. Um, you know, the, 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 they'll, you'd say, do you have any of these? And you know, they'll start smiling and they'll say, what are you looking in my windows? You know, you, you, you're watching me through my kitchen window. Um, and, uh, uh, and this is the, these are the first symptoms of, you know, they hate the, they hate the kids they're kicking the dog, you know, they're screaming at the husband, they're, they're flying off the handle. They're, this is, um, the first sign of perimenopausal, um, uh, perimenopause. And a lot of times the patients will come in and, the, you know, they've been to their, uh, uh, PCP and they've been to their, um, gynecologist and some of them even end up at psychiatrists and they're given, uh, SSRIs and, benzos and you know uh antipsychotic medications and all and you know god didn't make a, a prozac deficiency <laughs> okay yeah yes <laughs> all right it takes about four weeks so it's not an instant gratification but it takes four weeks once we we start uh replacing the progesterone for the symptoms to go away so you need uh, to warn them that about that okay because a lot of time, times they're not patient okay so your best, um, your best bet, your, what you're looking for is, the, I call it the EP ratio, estrone plus estradiol. So we looked at those, you know, on the page before, divided by progesterone. And, and this calculation, you don't have to, you don't have to um, do anything with the units. Okay. okay. So right. just the raw numbers as it is, you want it to be less than 250. Okay. Anything, okay. anything greater than 250 is uh, estrogen dominant. And even when they get closer, I had somebody yesterday at 225 and they had a lot of these symptoms too. So, okay. Okay. All right. Now, early on, when we first started, started doing this kind of work, we didn't get the estrones. So, and, and what you'll find, if you, if you go look it up in the literature, this is what they'll talk about. They'll talk about the progesterone estradiol ratio. Right. I see. Okay too much literature of this i got this from mark gordon you know the tbi guy um okay so progesterone divided by estradiol um now you have to div uh, you have to multiply the progesterone by times a thousand to get the correct units here okay okay so it's a thousand times the progesterone divided by uh, the estradiol our goal is 100 to 500 anything under 100 is estrogen dominant <clears throat> anything over over 500 is progesterone dominant um, usually the only time you're going to get a progesterone dominance is if we're giving them, if we do it, you know, it's our fault, you know, oh, you, okay. you gave them 400 milligrams of progesterone and, and, you know, and no estrogen and, and, and now they have progesterone dominance. So, okay. Um, a lot of times when you get, you know, especially an initial, um, lab, you'll get an estradiol less than five, which is basically zero. So your, yes. your denominator here is, is zero. <laughs> Um, if you want to put a number in there, I'll put 0 0.01 or something that, so you can get a number. Um, but you know, when you get a zero here, you know, or it, it, it's basically in, 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 it's progesterone over nothing, which is sort of infinity. Um, so technically it is a, a, a progesterone dominance, but it's basically the, the, the number there means that tells you that, you know, you, you have no estrogen, which is, you're going to gotcha. see that quite a bit. Okay. So, okay. all right. Um, <laughs> All right, testosterone, you know, our predominant male hormone, but remember, girls need, I'm politically incorrect, girls need a little bit of testosterone, boys need a little bit of estrogen, okay? Gotcha. Always, always remember that. Um, so this is one of the, so I can say it's here, this is LabCorp. Okay. And before 19, or 2017, in 2017, this number here was uh, 1,147, um, and, and this was a little bit higher also. And they, they lowered it. The, the explanation was due to the obesity crisis. I said, ah, okay. They said, shouldn't you raise it due to the obesity crisis, not lower it? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Our optimal is about 700 to 900 total. Mm. For females, this is again um, uh, a lab core. Um, so, Quest, I think Quest for females is 10 to 55. Um, and for males um, here in Quest is 250 to 1100. Um, okay. Those, those are the two big labs and the, bi the biggest hospital system here uses the Quest um, scale. 
Okay. So I can assure you that if you, your, your female patient comes in with a testosterone of five, she's going to have every symptom of low testosterone. If she comes in at 45, she's going to have every, every symptom of high testosterone. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, <laughs> our optimal for females for total is 30 to 40, but we need to look at the free test uh, free um, also. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So there's a number of ways to do it. If you have a, if you if you have a, a, a CMP, you can look at the um, albumin uh, uh, levels, and um, and uh, you need sex hormone binding globulin. You need to order this also. Um, yes. And you can get a bioavailable um, testosterone if you put in uh, on any Google, or, you know, any search engine, bioavailable testosterone. It'll take you to to a bunch of websites, and it'll have a formula, and you just plug in the numbers, and it'll tell you what's number normal. Um, and that's <clears throat> calculated free. Yeah, it's well, bio. It's bioavailable testosterone. That's what that. Okay. Is. Okay. This one's called free androgen index, and I like using this one. It's probably not quite as accurate because it doesn't take into account the albumin, um, you know, the second protein. Um, but it's 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 pretty accurate, and you can do this, in, you know, in your head or you know with a calculator. Um, and all you need is the sex hormone binding globulin. You don't need anything else. All you need is total testosterone and sex hormone binding globulin. Um, and so it's total testosterone divided by the product of, and then this again will correct for the units, 0.288 times the sex hormone binding globulin. Okay? Okay. So um, normal for males is about 30 to 130 and optimal is 53 to 108. And for females, um, the normal is about um, 0 0.4 to 8.4 and optimal is about three to six. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, it really, op realistically for females, anything under 2.0, they're going to, they're going to have low testosterone symptoms. Okay. Okay. Um, this is another correction I need to make here. I can do this right now. Um, so boron usually comes now the way we get it in three milligrams um uh i want to i, I want to correct that let's gotcha. usually comes in three milligrams things in the way so usually comes in three milligram pills so uh, we'll change this to three to nine okay so we start at three milligrams um at bedtime okay go up to nine usually you don't need more than six okay uh, and that, that works nicely and again like the seven keto dhea for um uh high estrone uh, this works pretty quickly, about four to six weeks, uh, maybe eight weeks. It will inc it will decrease your sex hormone binding globulin, usually by um, at least 25% up to 50%. Okay. Oh, uh, so, so okay. So we're treating high sex hormone binding globulin. And does and that, that that'll, that'll give you a, yeah, that'll give you a, a, an increase in testosterone, free testosterone. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Does that happen with, with, prolonged treatment supplementation um yeah but usually you don't need to do it too long you know three to six months tops is usually is usually all, all you need hmm. okay and, that and then and then you can back off again and then you back off again yeah um traditionally they've used danazole as a as okay a, right but uh you know boron is a you know not a controlled substance <laughs> gotcha. so, a little bit a little bit less uh you know the the, the less we have a uh, you know, on our, on our, you know, you know, targets at us better. So I don't think anybody's going to criticize you for recommending boron other than they'll tell you, oh, that stuff doesn't do anything. Okay. Well, uh, the medical doctor stuff is Dan is allow oh, you're, 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 you're a, you're a drug pusher. You know. So. <laughs> okay. So DHEA, just think of DHEA as sort of a mini testosterone. You know, it's one of the two precursors along with pregnenolone, you know, in the, um, uh, uh, in the steroidogenic pathway, here's the DHEA. Yes. It goes to androstenedione, dione, the testosterone. Um, the the um, so it's a mini testosterone. All of the all of the um, positive properties, negative properties are are the same as testosterone, with um, oh, two exceptions. One, it was actually um, uh, um, uh, FDA approved in 1952 for bipolar depression and major depression. Um, and it, two, um, it is your counterbalance to high cortisol. So when you, if you have high cortisol levels, 
Um, you can lower cortisol very nicely with um, uh, about uh, 25 milligrams of DHEA. And you'll, you'll get, you'll get a, a lower, you know, so, you know, cortisol is, you know, is an, you know, that's an indication of inflammation. The DHEA will counter it. Gotcha. Okay. Mm. So um, uh, there's lab values there, you know, the normal. Um, so we usually for females, 200 to 250 for males, a little bit higher. Um, so early on in my career, you know, when I, when I uh, was with Dr. Rosier, he had guys get, uh, DHEA levels 700, 800, and females four, 300, 400, they're going to start growing hair. <laughs> okay. I see. Okay. Um, so, uh, so doses 25 to 100 for males. I usually start 25 to, to 50, depending on the, on the lab value. Females, um, five to 25. Now, uh, what you're going to find though, is if you're treating them with testosterone, after about six months to a year, you're going to get with, get a negative feedback. So after about six months to a year, you're, you're really, unless they have, you know, that cortisol issue, you're going to end up um, basically, you know, wasting your your, your resources there because the, the, you're going to start seeing that the THEA levels will sort of level off or even drop. And then the more you give them, the, the more it'll drop. So if, if they're on taking testosterone, if you're doing that after about six months to, you, all, all you need to use it is to prime it. So you're priming this system here. Okay, and then after about six months to a year, remember testosterone comes in like one of the and it's one of the mobsters. It comes in and shuts everything down, you know, the exogenous stuff. So, okay. Um, so after about six months to a year, there's no point in even checking the le blood levels anymore. Um, and, oh, and no they're point. adequate. Yeah, yeah. If they're adequate, and if the and if the if they're if they're on testosterone, can you know on a continuous basis, um, it, the DHEA is going to drop. So there's no point in okay doing it. Okay, pregnenolone memory okay that's a that's a reflex probably you know that's your hormone of memory all right and it, it, it does a, a bunch of other things learning and cognitive performance but memory um lab values are are ridiculous there's your two standard deviations 33 to 248 that doesn't help us you know that's uh -huh. right 90 to 110 that's pretty much optimal um uh we we were using um douglas early on and we were getting 30 milligram Pregnant alone, we were using it two to three times a day. Um, Life Extension has a 50 and 100 milligram one, that, and they're pretty cheap. It's like uh, 15 bucks, I think, uh, for up for uh, 90 of them. Uh, and uh, and they're over the counter too. So, you know. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I think that's a, a been a, one of the big surprises uh, in reviewing uh, this with you is uh, pregnant alone. Yeah. Yeah. And we use pregnenone a lot. When we talk about, when we'll talk about head injuries at one point, we use high doses of pregnenone for about uh -huh. four weeks. You know, we'll go up to 400, 500 milligrams sometimes. Um, and you're going to find that that's going to um, uh, in, in way improve. And that's, that's a way 400 milligrams of pregnenone for four weeks and uh, two to 400 milligrams of progesterone. You can use that. You're going to find that's going to be a really potent antidepressant. Okay. Uh, say that again. Yeah. So about 400 milligrams of pregnenolone um, and then two to 400 milligrams of progesterone, even in, even in males um, is a really potent antidepressant. Um, uh, progesterone uh, said 200 milligrams. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Progesterone. And that's a uh, daily for TBI. That's our, those are in males. Right. Okay. 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 Next is hematocrit. And again, uh, so so in Wilkesbury, which is sea level, uh, thirty five to forty five for males and thirty five, thirty four to forty four for females. In Reno, here, you know, we're at forty five hundred uh, uh, feet. You know, that's the that's our valley floor, um, so it's a little bit higher. So it's not unusual to guys come in at hematocrits of fifty. Um, usually at fifty five, we'll tell them if they're feeling heavy, they'll, they'll tell you they feel heavy. Um, when they do a phlebotomy, they, then they feel lighter, but technically okay. you don't, you know, technically you really don't need to do it. Um, you know, remember Lance Armstrong, he got his hematocrits up to 70, <laughs> his, his uh, yeah. 25 and he wasn't stroking out. Um, so he was using a combination of testosterone and, and EPO, erythropoietin, um, uh, you know, before he, you know, everybody knew he was cheating, but it took him 10 years to catch him. <laughs> um, but, you know, the, the other doctors will get all, all skitzed out that they're going to have strokes. And and, you know, that does that doesn't happen. 
All you, have, all you have to do is look at a, a, a full CBC. If they're on testosterone, the hematocrit, the, the hemoglobin will, will be high, but the uh, platelets and the white blood cell count will be normal. Okay. So there are a uh, so lot of concern, especially, you know, COVID and uh, <clears throat> vaccine syndromes and whatnot right. mm -hmm. associated with hyperviscosity, of course. Right. Um, but... Um, <clears throat> Um, uh, uh, the people that do autopsies and uh, the people that uh, uh, prepare bodies after death are noticing a lot of this uh, vascular coagulopathy kind of stuff. Right. Um, <clears throat> has that correlated to anything about viscosity that you come across? Not, not with testosterone. <laughs> okay. So in the, in the context of testosterone, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, these, these spike proteins do all sorts of weird things to your blood. And, right. Uh, so, um, you know, our, uh, you know, our protocol here is we use nanokinase. Yes. Remember the dose, uh, I think it's a hundred milligrams twice a day. Um, quercetin 500 twice a day and betaine. I think it's, forget the dose. It's once a day. Okay. And that's, that's our go-to there. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. But not from testosterone. Okay. Gotcha. So, you know, the reflex, oh, you, you, now they have polycythemia vera, you know, which is a, a rare blood tumor, which is a genetic blood tumor. And, uh, you know, the VA sends all the, every guy with a hematocrit over, over, over 50 to, you know, want testosterone to the, to the a hematologist and tells them they have to have a bone marrow biopsy. <laughs> oh gosh. I keep telling them just say, and, and they say, well, we can't say no, you know, the, the VA. So I said, okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, they, apparently they got a couple of young guys in finally the, the old, the old geezers left. And, um, so they're, 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 they're getting a little better from what I understand. Fantastic. Thank God. Yeah. Um, MCV, you know, that's part of your, uh, red, uh, CBC. Um, right. So uh, mean core vascular volume, um, this is a cell size and you can look at the, look at this, um, usually, um, um, 79 to 97, 80 to 97 is normal. Anything under 80, there's usually a, an iron deficiency. Anything gotcha. greater than 97 is a pernicious anemia. So it's a B12 folic acid deficiency. Okay. And a lot of times it will correlate with the homocysteine that we did earlier. Okay. Especially, uh, you know, they'll have an MCV of 99 and they'll have a homocysteine of 13. Um, you know, that's, that, that's your B, B vitamin deficiency. Okay. Uh, it, it, it surprises me that we actually don't see more elevated MCVs with as, you know, as, uh, MTHFR problems as we've got, right. you know? Yeah, uh, you, you'll see them, you know. Yeah. You know a, a long time, I never even looked at it. I didn't know what it meant, and I just, you know, sort of fluffed it off. And so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Prolactin, we always, we always measure a prolactin level on everybody at least once. Normal is 11 to 14. As you know, if it's high, high is considered greater than 25. But if for pituitary adenoma, you need that to be 50, 60, 70. And you need more than one. Sometimes you can get a transient one that's high. If they're breastfeeding, it's high. Um, and, um, and it, it, but if it's, if you get two or more that are 50, 60, 70, um, you need at, at a minimum a skull x ray to look for a cell Um, you, a, Better was would be a, a CAT scan, so you're looking for pituitary adenoma. Gotcha. The the thing that you're going to find mostly, and actually you're going to find some that you wouldn't have found because we're doing prolactin levels, but we're really not looking for, for them to be high. At least you know on our garden variety patients. Mm -hmm. Um, I had um, about a year or two ago, I, I had two. I had two in a row came in with with pituit with a prolactin. You know they they they. One was a guy, one was a lady, and they were, you know, menopause and and uh, low T, and uh, their um, the prolactin levels were really high, like 80, 90, both of them. And huh. so um, I, we, we got a CAT scan, and there was a little tiny adenoma in both of them. I sent them over to the neurosurgeon. The guy calls me. He says, you, you find more pituitary adenomas than any do other doctor in town. Why is that? <laughs> 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 and, he says, and he says, and you send them to me and they're too small for me to take out. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I, I pretty much know that, but, um, you know, but, you know, I want, I just want to make sure I, you know, I found something, I, I want to make sure I'm covered. So, so, you know, we'll use uh, cabergeline. I think that's how you spell, spell it, say it, cabergeline, huh. uh, twice, twice a week, um, and that'll shrink it down. 
Um, and that'll, oh, that'll, that'll get the that, that'll get the prolactin levels under ten under 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 one. <laughs> did you tell him about the low prolact prolactins that yeah, you were seeing you know, in association you know, with depression? Well, you know, neurosurgeons not not interested in that. They're, they're only yeah yeah. yeah. You know, they're, they're, you know, you know, they, you know, they're only interested in what they're interested in. So, so yeah. again, so we talked about low prolactin level, less than six. Um, this is where you get your treatment resistant and anxiety or treatment resistant depression. You know, these are the guys that, and gals that have, they're on four different antidepressants, six, six other drugs to, to counteract the, the antidepressant side effects. And they're going around to the, you know, they've been on three psychiatrists, two psychologists. The, they went to the iridologist, the Reiki master. They went to India to the ashram. They're they're always looking for the, the, the thing that's going to fix them. All right, and you'll 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 find these people. Um, so less than six is it's a good guideline. The other thing that's a good guideline for um, I don't think there's any literature on this, so I don't know if you can hang your hat on it. But I used to do insurance exams for lawyers. You know, they were in car accidents, and you know, I hit my head on the on the steering wheel, and now I can't yeah. work, I can't think. Right. Well, if their prolactin levels are are, are normal, or you know, you know, eight, nine, ten, they can work. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> I, I I don't do that anymore because I can't stand I can't stand the the patients and I can't stand the lawyers. <laughs> yes, I don't do that anymore. But you can tell whether they you know you can use that as a tell, tell whether they're faking or not. You know, and ninety five percent of them are faking. You know, you know. Yes. Okay. IGF one. So this is a, a a screen for growth hormone. Doctor Gordon says you have to do a growth hormone IGF one and IGF BP three. So, um, so if you do that, you do these, you have to do these between seven and 10 AM, uh, to, to get an accurate growth hormone level, the, 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 the whoever draws it has to have a steady hand. You can't shake it because if it, it'll, it, it'll, it'll get an art be artificially high. It'll break up some of the cells. Um, they have to run it within 15 minutes of drawing the blood. So it's really, a, it, you know, sort of inaccurate. Um, you know that they're huh. sitting around for for a couple of hours before they get around to processing it. You know? huh. Okay. Right. So, so IGF one is a little bit more stable. We want it to be between two hundred and two fifty. Okay, and then we'll go through a whole protocol for uh, peptides. Thyroid. Um, so you know this is your TSH. You know that's uh, you. We we all know this story, right? Um, right. Optimal is zero point eight to two point zero. Remember, this is an inverse. <laughs> this is high. This is low. You'll, you'll find patients say, well, I, I got my lab and my, my TSH was 0 0.3. So um, um, it was it was uh, too low. So so I took more. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or my, my TSH was six. So it was really high. So I took less. <laughs> right. Yes. You know, yeah. that happens all the time. Um the free T3, I, to me, this is the most important uh, one. One of the of all the parameters you want it in the upper third. You want it like three point two, three point four to four point two. The free T4, they, you know, they'll, they'll, so so the, uh, the, the here they'll they'll do a TSH with a reflex the free T4. I don't know. This okay. is a store unit. I don't know that this really tells you anything. Um, you know, usually if this is high, this is going to be high. Um, so. Um, that's uh, that's that's kind of kind of it. <laughs> um, reverse T three is an yes. inert portion. We talked about this before. Remember, ninety to ninety five percent of the time, it's a cortisol abnormality, usually high. Um, it can be due to bl blood sugar also, but most of the time, it's cortisol abnormality. Symptoms are usually positive over fifteen. Just a reminder: symptoms are. Um, um, they wake up in the morning, they're tired. In the middle of the morning, they need something to keep them going. In the afternoon, they feel like they need a nap. By dinner time, they're exhausted. Later at night, they get a second wind, and that's when they're wide awake, usually 8, 9, 10 o'clock. And there's usually sugar and salt cravings with that. Okay. With um, high cortisol, yeah, low D3. Yeah, correct. Okay. Um, or high, high reverse D3. High reverse T3, right. Gotcha. And then you can do a, a um, free T3. Uh, this should be free T3. This is an error too. Um, free T3, a reverse T3 um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, ratio. So that's your thyroid to cortisol. You want that to be over 2.0. Okay. okay. All right. So that's just a check. Okay. This TSHI 
um, is a, a low TSH and a low T3. Um, so uh, you, sometimes you'll see a TSH of like 0 0.75 and a free T3 of 2.0. Um, so we do this formula here and less than 1.3, but that's that's a neuroinflammation. So that's a, a brain injury. Okay. Oh. Okay. That's what that is. Um, TPO, um, again, uh, now some literature, there's there's some authors will tell you that any any TPO over than one, you know, these are your thyroid antibodies, is positive. Um, these are the lab values, uh, lab A, that's lab core, lab B is um, uh, Quest. Um, okay. So if you get a lab, uh, you know, a, 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 a TPO of 20, I, I might I might want to want to do something about it. And in here, you get about a, th a five or a six. Okay. Okay. My world record, by the way, they don't do it this way anymore. But I had a guy came in about five, about six years ago, 4,226. Oh, so my. We, we rechecked it. I sent it to, the, uh, you know, th that was a local lab. I sent it to Florida. I, I went and sent it to Access and I sent it to... Um, another lab and we, they were all pretty much the same um he's been with me uh, it's 2015 actually a lot, lot longer um the last time we did it it was 101 so you come in oh, at wow. 101 you know we got a problem you come in at 4,000 you're at 101 hey we're in good shape <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, so numbers you know lie an antithyroglobulin is less than 1.0 and they'll reflex us now I've had this happen a couple of times they'll do a thyroglobulin so if thyroglobulin is high, that's that's uh, medullary thyroid cancer until you rule out otherwise. Okay. So okay. I had somebody, I got a, I got a, I got the TPO and antithyroglobulin were negative, and they did a thyroglobulin with it, and it, it was 12. Normal's less than 10. Uh -huh. and, they, and they had a, a, a small um, thyroid um, cancer. Okay. TSI that's is that they have hyperthyroid symptoms. Um, it's a percentage you want it to be less than 130. What is TSI? Thyroid stimulate. Uh, I always forget. Uh, thyroid uh, stimulating immune immunoglobulin. That's for hyper. Oh, okay. That's for hyperthyroid. That's for Graves' disease. Right? So <clears throat> okay. if they have hyperthyroid symptoms. You know they're losing weight. They can't. They're shaking like a leaf. Uh, their heart rate's one hundred and and eighty. Their blood pressure's two hundred and ten. Um, you know that's that's hyperthyroidism. Do you only draw that if they're uh, yeah, if hyperthyroid? they have the, if they have the symptoms? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Because all right, and then uh, you need um, you know you need iron and protein to to make the thyroid uh, 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 molecule. So we look at ferritin, which is iron store. Um, we want that to be between ninety and one hundred and ten. Um, and then we look at the again B twelve and folic acid levels. We'll sometimes get those. We'll get those with the if they have thyroid antibodies. Um, and you want them again in the upper third. So you want the B12 greater than seven or 800 and folic acid greater than five. Okay. Okay. Got that? Um, yes. Here's some advanced lab tests and then I'm going to have to get going here. Um, so um, uh, so food uh, food sensitivity, it's not really allergy, it's food sensitivity. ID, I'm aware of it. IgG. Yes. The functional GI test, there's lots of companies. With, there's Genova. Um, Genova's come with a come out now with something called Genova Endo, which has a, like all of these things, you know, in different com and you can just get different components of it. Um, and there's also um, a GI Map. I forget which company makes that. We have used that one also. Um, and so that's this will give you your um, dysbiosis, your your um, your uh, microbiome. Um, it'll give you your normal flora, abnormal flora. Um, it'll find parasites and and fungi and and bacteria and viruses okay so any one of those unfortunately the, I, I think the SIBO test should be bundled in with it because it seems to me it's it's the same but it's not so um if you you, know, you have you have GI, GI symptoms and you do the you, one of your GI functional tests and you come up with nothing then we have to do another test the SIBO you know they they drink lactulose and breathe into a into a bag and if uh, you, they look for methane and and, um, yeah. and um, hydrogen which should not so if we've got uh, uh, auto inflammation of the uh, thyroid, right, and we're treating it and we're not getting where we want to, then that's where we consider these yeah. tests. Well, somebody who comes in and they, the thyroid antibodies are positive, you have to ask about their GI function. Okay, yeah. remember eighty percent of the of the um, immune system is in the small intestine, so invariably they're going to have um, you know uh, 
food sensitivities, they're going to have some sort of GI issue. Okay. okay. They come in with a GI issue. Make sure you look at your, their thyroid, at least, at least, you know, a cursory glance to see, make sure that that's okay. That's gotcha. right. Um, Lyme antibodies. Um, we're doing a lot of mold testing now. We're see, finding a lot of this. I'm getting pretty good at it. I think the last 23 tests now, I've had 19 positives. So, um, hmm. okay. So uh, I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm still working on it. I have a whole lecture on just mold and mycotoxins. Okay. Um, if you're according to Dr. Campbell, who was one of the gurus, you can only, you're only supposed to do serum tests, IgG and IgE antibodies. Um, a lot of them, others, there's a guy named Shoemaker who's got a, a big name in the mold world. He does urines. Dr. Campbell says the urines are not accurate. So let them fight it out. And then food sensitivity tests. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, I think we're going to stop there because I got to get going. Um, gotcha. And so we'll we'll talk about, I, I did talk about the calculations. We'll go through this next time. And then from there, um, we'll take it from there. Um, okay. Did you get, I sent you, I, I hope you got it, um, a, a, um, a, a slide deck on um, thyroid um, remedies. I sent it in I'll, the Gmail uh, either yesterday or Monday, yesterday or Monday. Oh, I haven't looked in those two days. I'll look for it now. Okay. Make sure you, if you didn't get it, let me know. Okay. Sometimes okay. I sent it with it on a G drive. Sometimes that doesn't go through. Okay. Okay. But I sent Great. you uh, it's about 60 slides and it's all, it's, it's, it's everything, all the remedies. That's all it is, is just the remedies for, for thyroid. Okay. We'll get thyroid, but um, I was working on that for somebody else. So I wanted you to have, make sure you had that. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, sir. Great. I'll talk to you okay. next week. Same time, same station. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Let's shut this off.